Hello. Let's spend some time looking at the gift of evangelism that, or the evangelist rather, that Paul lists in Ephesians 4 as part of our focus videos on the fivefold ministries. We're going to just start by reading the verse that we're referring to. So if you've got a Bible, turn to it. Otherwise, I'm sure Owen will put this on the screen for me. In verse 11 onwards, it says, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by the wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes, Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. I love reading the whole thing because when you see it in context, it really is about how it's building and growing the body of Christ that we're given these gifts. I want to look at the role of the evangelist in the church and the role of evangelism in you. Let's start with what the Bible says about the role and then look at what it means for the church. So in Acts chapter 21 verse 8, we see that Philip is referred to as Philip the evangelist. So the role is defined in him as a person. We can see one way that Philip acts as an evangelist earlier in the book of Acts in chapter 8 verse 26, when he meets the Ethiopian eunuch on the road. I'll I'll read through the text. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, rise and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, a queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship, and was returning, seated in his chariot, and was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. That's weird. It's a bit weird to do something like that, but he does it. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come and sit with him. And it goes on, and in verse 34, And the eunuch said to Philip, about whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? And then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And then he baptized the eunuch who went on back to Ethiopia, I assume. It's a really interesting story. And God uses Philip to lead this really interesting figure to Christ. And the eunuch then goes on and has untold ramifications for the glory of God in his own country and for the church there. It's the genesis of something new. And this is the picture of an evangelist, first prompted by the Holy Spirit and sensitive to what the Holy Spirit's doing. An evangelist is gifted, yes, but he or she is only doing what God has called them and enabled them to do. Second, He is boldly approaching a stranger. He's got no shame or misgivings. An evangelist is often very confident when talking to people, but this in itself is part of the gift. I love in particular Terry Virgo's story of how his confidence publicly speaking and preaching the gospel is inextricably linked to being baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, being very dynamic in the explanation of the gospel. An evangelist will be engaging and enigmatic and be able to present the gospel in unique ways for people to understand. And you can even see that in the story. Finally, and most importantly, it's for building up the local church. And this is really crucial. And that's why it's nested so firmly in the book of Ephesians like that, because it's the role that builds up the people and builds up the church. How exactly does it build up the church? By leading and inspiring and encouraging the body of Christ to evangelize. 
The evangelist does not hold the responsibility of the church's evangelism, and this is a crucial distinction, but rather the evangelist will lead the church in its evangelism and help them grow in their own gifts. An evangelist is called to more than just preaching the gospel to the lost, but rather to catch up and lead the local church to grow in its efforts to evangelize to the lost. So the evangelist and evangelism are two totally separate things, really, for the purposes of this video, because we are all called to evangelize, but we may not all have the gift of the evangelist, which is an office for the church. If you look at Mark 16, 15, it's pretty black and white. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. There's no getting around it. It's a calling for every single one of us. Whether you're extroverted or introverted or full of courage or timid or a clear speaker or you suffer with a speech impediment, God has called you and asked you, instructed you even, to tell others about his great good news. Perhaps this looks like bringing a loaf of bread to a neighbour or meeting a friend for a drink or just quietly talking to a co-worker during a lunch break. Each and every one of us are uniquely gifted to evangelise to the lost in our own tiny ecosystem. You have unique relationships to those around you that nobody else has, and you're able to speak into situations in an equally unique way. Finally, let's look at Matthew 9, 37 to 38. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. The problem has never been that there aren't enough people who want to hear the gospel, but that there simply aren't enough people sharing the gospel. That was true for the early church, and it's true for us today. We are all, even you, called to boldly share our faith with those around us. Thank you.